Talking to air traffic control can be one of the most intimidating parts of your private pilot training. Today, let's take a look at talking to a tower in a class Delta airspace, and taking a look what it looks like from taxi clearance to takeoff and then approach back towards the airport. Starting here on the ground at K Golf Mike Uniform, my home airport, Greenville Downtown. For the sake of this video, we're going to assume we've already done our run-up and we've done all our checklist. At this point, we are ready for taxi. Not all, but most Class Delta airports have something called an ATIS broadcast. The ATIS broadcast is similar to an ASOS or an AWOS, but in another sense, it's updated every hour. Here at Golf Mike Uniform, it's re-recorded every hour by a person up in the tower. The ATIS not only has weather, but has other important remarks, such as taxiway closures, runway closures, or just other important information that we need to know. So to start off, if we take a look at our airport diagram, we'll see that the ATIS frequency for K Golf Mike Uniform is 127.075. So let's head on down to COM2 and plug that in. We're going to plug it down in here on our COM2 unit, flip it to active, and then we'll listen on COM2. Tower with ATIS information, Sierra Ton 2153, weather winds 230 at 7, visibility 10, skies clear, temperature 24, dew point 10, altimeters 2996, landing, departing runway 19, or visual approach. Before our departure is advised, direction of the flight, requesting radar advisory, you need to call sign type aircraft. Three letter identifier for you, destination along with the altitude requesting en route. Use caution for coyotes and geese reported on and near the runway. Use caution for multiple airports in the vicinity. I'll three back hold short instructions, five on contact UF Sierra. All right, there was a lot of information there. So if you missed some of it, I challenge you to rewind the video and listen to it again. But once you've done that, I'm gonna put all the information up on the screen and let's talk about it. If you've been training in untowered airport, most of this might seem pretty familiar. We got our wind, our visibility, the sky condition, temperature, dew point, altimeter, but then also we now have a runway in use. We hear that runway 19 is currently used here at Golf Mike Uniform. And then we also hear at the end something very different. We hear contact and advise we have information Sierra. Information Sierra is the letter identifier for the ATIS broadcast for that specific time. Like I said, this recording is changed every hour. So every hour they change the letter identifier. They basically go in the order of the alphabet. So the next ATIS information is going to be Tango since it comes after Sierra, Sierra for S. What this is and why this is important is because when we listen to the identifier, that letter, when we contact ground or tower and let them know which information letter we have, it lets them know if we've listened to the most current and up-to-date weather. With that in mind, let's jump back and look at our airport diagram and get our ground frequency. Taking a look at the diagram for Gulf Mike Uniform, we can see that ground frequency is 121.25. So let's jump back in the plane again plug that into our COM1 unit and flip it to active. I also went ahead and plugged in the tower frequency here. If we wanted to look at the airport diagram, it's 119.9. Now, when we're talking to air traffic control, it almost always follows the same general flow. Who we are calling, who we are, where we are, and what we want, or what do we want to do. 99% of the time, this is how an initial call to air traffic control goes. There are some exceptions, but when we're usually learning this is the flow, we want to start getting in our heads. So let's start plugging in some information here. Who we are calling. We are calling Greenville Ground. Who we are. We are Cessna 9605 Quebec. That's our call sign. Where we are. If we take a look at the airport diagram, we are actually located here on the south ramp. And then what do we want? Well, we want to depart out. Well, to depart, we have to get some taxi clearance. So what do we tell them? We tell them that we are ready for taxi. And we also let them know that we have the current information, in this case, Sierra. And then we also want to let them know what direction we're going. In our case, we're going to be going westbound. So if we put all that information together, this is how our first initial call to ground goes. Greenville Ground, Cessna 9 or 605 Quebec is on the south ramp, ready to taxi information Sierra for a westbound departure. 9605 Quebec ground uh, via Golf Alpha Cross 10 to attack to 19 and was 2207 October 2997. Wow, okay. <laughs> a lot of information just got thrown at you. So, again, same thing. If you missed it, go back and let's do it again and then let's talk about it. Let's take a look at the airport diagram and dissect exactly what this ground controller just gave us. The controller tells us to taxi via Golf Alpha Cross 1028 to 19. 
Now, apologies if he was going a little fast there. The controllers here at Golf Mike Uniform do talk pretty fast, but the more you fly and the more you talk to air traffic control, the more you'll start to understand it. So let's take a look at our airport diagram here. If we look here, taxiway golf and then left on alpha will take us straight down to runway 19. And then he also told us we could cross 1028, or in this case, he called it 1028. So all we need to do to reply back to him is we need to repeat exactly the instructions he gave us. Now, the good thing about replying to ground is because we've already established that communication with him, we don't need to start off with Greenville ground and our call sign again. It's, it's, it's understood that we're the ones replying back to him. So all we need to do is repeat the instructions that he just gave us, then we will end it with our call sign. So that call looks like this. Taxi via Golf Alpha cross runway 1028 to runway 19, Cessna 9605 Quebec. So now we simply just taxi following the route that the ground controller gave us. Now we definitely want to keep our ears open just in case ground came back and gave us some other instructions. They might tell us to hold short, or they might tell us to stop, they might tell us to follow another plane. So that's why it's very important, especially at towered airports, we're consistently listening for our call sign in case different instruction comes through. Once we get to the end of the taxiway to runway 19, again, we're going to assume you've already done your checklist before your pre-takeoff. But now that we're at the end of the taxiway, we need to talk to Greenville Tower. Tower handles all takeoff and arrivals, while ground handles everything else on the ground. We could take a look at our airport diagram to see the tower frequency is 119.9, but thankfully, we already plugged it on standby earlier, so all we have to do is flip it to active. Now that tower is active, we're going to follow the exact same flow that we followed earlier. Who we are calling, who we are, where we are, and what do we want. So let's fill in the blanks again. Who we are calling, we're calling Greenville Tower. Who we are, Cessna 9605 Quebec. Where we are, we're holding short of runway 19. We could also include at Alpha 8, but it's not required. But for the sake of this video and extra practice, let's say for the sake that in this case, we are holding short of runway 19 at Alpha 8. And then what do we want? We're ready for departure. A quick little note for you, I tend to teach my students to say ready for departure instead of ready for takeoff. That way there's no confusion with the controllers of them accidentally misinterpreting you, reading back what you thought was a takeoff clearance. It just helps communication be a little more understandable and a little more clear. So if we throw that all together, Greenville Tower, Cessna 9605 Quebec, holding short runway 19 at Alpha 8, ready for departure. We'll listen for Tower's response, which will probably be something like this. 9605 Quebec, Greenville Tower, runway 19, clear second. Replying back is pretty simple. It's the exact same thing we did with our taxi instruction. We're just going to repeat back exactly what the tower told us to do, and then, of course, do exactly that. Cleared for takeoff, runway 19 or Cessna 9 or 605 Quebec. From this point, we'll take off and continue our adventure out to the west and continue our flight. Not all, but some airports with towers will also hand you off to a different frequency or give you permission to switch frequencies. Typically, what that sounds like is something like this. Cessna 9605 Quebec, frequency change approved. And all we need to repeat back is frequency change approved, Cessna 9605 Quebec. Again, not all towers will do this. Some won't say anything as you leave their airspace, but if they do, that's exactly what you say back. All right, so we've gone out, we've done our flight, and now it's time to come back and arrive at our class Delta airport. The first thing we're going to do is listen to the ATIS broadcast and see if there's a new information available. It's a good idea to do this between 15 to 20 miles out, so you can write down everything and have time to kind of anticipate what you believe Tower is going to give us for instructions when it comes time to land. So let's take a listen to the ATIS and see if it's changed. Tower with ATIS information, Tango time 2253, weather 12105, visibility 10, skies clear, temperature 23, dew point 10, October 2998. Landing part of runway 19 visual approach. VFR departures advise the direction of flight. If requesting radar advisories, need to call sign type aircraft, three letter identifier for your destination, along with the altitude requesting en route. Pilot three back hold short instructions. Use caution for multiple airports in the vicinity. Also use caution for coyotes and geese reported on and near the runway. Advise on contact, you have Tango. So it sounds like information Tango is now current. So now we need to let Tower know when we come back in that we have information Tango. It lets him know that we have the most up-to-date weather. So we're gonna make our first initial call to Tower when we're 10 miles out. Some class Delta airports have some visual waypoints that they like you to call at, but as a general rule, 10 miles out is a great spot to make your first call. So let's talk through what this call is gonna look like. We're gonna follow the exact same flow as before. Who we are calling, who we are, where we are, and what we want. Who we are calling, 
We're calling Greenville Tower. Who we are, we're Cessna 9605 Quebec. Where we are, if we take a look at our heading indicator, we know we're heading directly towards the airport right now. So if we look at the bottom of the heading indicator, it's a great quick way to know what direction we're heading from. We're heading east, so we're coming from the west. And we're making this call when we're 10 miles out. So of course, the call is going to be we're 10 miles to the west. And then what do we want? We want to come into land. It's pretty simple. So we can say inbound for a full stop landing. We can say inbound to land. If we're going to do touch and goes, we can also say inbound for touch and goes. Whatever we're intending to do, we're going to include that. And then we're going to end it with the information that we have that's current. So let's throw all that together. And this is what the call looks like. Greenville Tower, Cessna 9 or 605 Quebec is 10 miles to the west. Inbound, full stop landing with information tango. Now, before we hear Towers reply back, here's what we can expect. Tower is going to acknowledge us and give us some instructions on how to enter the traffic pattern for the airport. If you're unfamiliar with the traffic pattern, I highly recommend you watch one of our previous videos that we talk about the traffic pattern and the different legs. We're going to assume for this video that you already understand what the traffic pattern is and the different legs. So Tower is going to give us instruction on how to enter a specific leg of the pattern for us to come into land. There's a bunch of different options we could expect to hear. We already know from the ATIS that they're landing runway 19. So if we take a look at our heading indicator again, we know 19 is going to be landing to the south. So we'd be setting up nice for a right downwind for runway 19. Tower could also tell us to enter the right base for runway 19. There's so many different options that the towers could possibly give us, but we want to make sure we listen and write down if we have time or just memorize whatever instruction they give us because we're going to have to repeat it back to them. Now, don't get overwhelmed because the tower might give you a bunch of other information, including the weather. It's good to know, but we don't need to repeat all that information back to them. The only information we need to repeat back is the instruction on how to enter the pattern. So let's take a listen to what the tower controller gives us for our instruction, and then we'll repeat that back. Number 9605, Quebec, Greenville Tower, runway 190. Wind 2006, altimeter 2997, near the midfield right there, one report entry. So Tower told us to enter the midfield right downwind for runway 19er. And then he also included the end for us to report the midfield. So that's pretty simple. All we need to repeat back is this. Enter midfield right downwind runway 19er and we'll report midfield. Cessna 9605 Quebec. Exactly the same how we did with our taxi clearance. We only need to end the transmission with our call sign. We don't need to say it at the beginning and we don't need to acknowledge Greenville Tower again. So we'll continue to fly towards the airport and set up for the right midfield downwind. Now, I know what a bunch of you guys are thinking. A right midfield downwind? Isn't normal traffic pattern left? Well, yes, you are correct. But at towered airports, the controllers are managing the traffic flow. So there's a chance you could get right traffic, left traffic, all sorts of different options. Whatever the tower tells us to do, though, is what we're going to follow to do. Of course, the exception for that is when it compromises safety. You as pilot command, you have the authority to deviate from instruction if it does compromise the safety of the flight. But when it doesn't, we should always try to follow what air traffic control tells us to do. As we approach and set up to enter the midfield right downwind for runway 19, we're going to plan to call tower up and let them know that we're there. We don't need to repeat that we're inbound to land, they already know that, so all we need to do is call them up and let them know that we're currently where they expected us to make our call. Greenville Tower, Cessna 9605 Quebec, entering the midfield right downwind, runway 19er. Room 05 Quebec, clear to land runway 19 So we just received our landing clearance from Tower, so all we need to do is repeat it back, exactly what they told us. Clear to land, runway 19er, Cessna 9605 Quebec. We'll fly the pattern like normal, set up for a normal landing, and you're going to touch down, buttering that landing, of course, because I know y'all's landings is absolutely beautiful. After touching down, we want to turn off the runway at the next safest option. We don't want to stay on the runway long because, you know, there's other traffic coming, but we also don't want to rush off the runway and cause an accident. So here, we're going to turn off at golf. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a recording of this, but usually what happens is there's two options that can happen whenever you land. Tower could give you taxi instructions to wherever you're going if they know where you're going. In our case, Greenville Ground knows our plane, so they know exactly that we're headed back to the south ramp. So they could give us taxi instruction directly into the south ramp. If Tower does not give you taxi instruction to where you're going, what we need to do is we need to exit the runway, be sure we're across the whole short line, and then let Tower know where we're going. That might look something like this. 
Greenville Tower, Cessna 9605 Quebec, off at Gulf, going to the south ramp. Now, they could give us taxi instruction from there, or they could tell us to contact ground. If we get told to contact ground, we'll just switch over to ground and let ground know the exact same thing. Greenville Ground, Cessna 9605 Quebec, off of runway 19 at Gulf, going to the south ramp. They'll then give us some taxi instructions exactly how we did at the beginning, and we just repeat it back and taxi to wherever we're going. It's that simple. The key thing is to make sure we're not doing anything without instruction. If they did not give us instruction to taxi somewhere, we need to make sure we have clear instructions before we just start taxiing willy-nilly. But that's it. That's the basics of working radio communications at a Class Delta airport. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please be sure to leave them in the comments. We're going to be making some more videos like this because I know radio work can be intimidating, but we want to make it as simple and easy as possible. If you guys enjoyed the video, also be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe for some awesome, great training videos. We got some great stuff coming up in the future. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a great day.